back to Tidal Gardens. My tank has been gaining more life over the past month with new corals and other critters, some desirable and some undesirable. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. So over the past month, we've added quite a few new corals to the tank. On the tree rockscape on the right, I've added a wintergreen alveopora to the top that will eventually add in more movement once it gets bigger, I'm hoping. I've always liked the shape of alveopora polyps. They just remind me of those stereotypical groovy little flower designs that you see in like, I don't know, hippie costumes from the 60s and 70s. And I hope that in the future I can get another one in a brighter color to really round out that area of the rockscape. On the same rockscape, but on the bottom, I've also added a frag of Blue Raven Blastomusa merletti. I love the shape that Blastomusa corals take on and was really keen on getting some into my tank for that reason. And it worked out pretty well because Blastos don't tend to like a lot of light, so it was perfect for that area of the tank. I'll eventually add a bit more rock pieces around the frag so it has more space to grow, but for right now, I think this is fine. Then, like I said in the last video, I wanted to start adding some corals to the archways in the middle of the tank. And so, of course, I had to pick out some really bright encrusting corals for this job. Obviously. At the moment, I currently have a Superman Stylociniella, which is insanely vibrant. I love it. A Platinum Halo Montipora and an Antivenom Favites. I went about attaching the Favites and the Silo with putty and superglue, but I was able to shove the Monty Frag into a little crevice, so I really didn't bother securing it any further after that. After I attached the frags to the rock, I realized that the Stylo and Monty Frag plugs were a little discreet to the point where if they encrusted over, you could kind of tell the plugs were there, but it wouldn't be entirely obvious. But when you look at the Favites, it would be incredibly obvious that there's a plug sitting under there and it would be this really awkward, ovally type shape. So I did end up forcing the plug off of the rock, cutting the coral off of the plug, which was fairly easy since it hadn't encrusted over yet like the other two, and then sticking the coral back onto the rock with putty and glue. So now when it doesn't cross, it won't have that disc shape underneath and it'll look a little bit more natural and therefore better. That is, if it encrusts at all. This coral doesn't look like it's doing too well ever since uh, that second reattachment because of all the stress and the jostling, I'm assuming. But I've learned that they can bounce back after all that, so we will see how this ends up going. At least the Stylo and the Monty are doing okay, although I probably just jinxed myself, so go ahead and knock on some wood for me, please. The last addition to the coral collection is another frog spawn. This choice was mainly made for the clownfish. Even though they are jerks, they still deserve to be spoiled. And since they enjoyed the first frog spawn so much, we thought it was a good idea to extend the frog spawn collection so they can have a lot more space to do their little clownfish thing. And they immediately took a liking to it once I put it in the tank. No, really. Like, once I started putting it in the tank and it was still in my hand, they were trying to get my hand off of the coral so they could hop on inside. Other than that, the first batch of corals is still doing pretty well. The Zoa Garden is doing well after I moved all of the Zoas to a less shady location. Everything has gotten a lot more shrunken down and some of the Zoas have also grown a couple new heads on them. So that's good that they're growing in size. The only issue I ended up seeing when we moved them was that the electric Oompa Loompa zoanthids did not like getting moved at all to a sunnier spot, or at least they didn't like getting moved so fast. I'm assuming they may have just gotten a bit shocked with the sudden change of light because after I moved them, all but one of the polyps refused to open. So I went ahead and moved them back into a semi-shady location. And after that, the one polyp is still going strong and opening all the way. So hopefully it recovers enough to start producing more polyps because I really like this variety of zoas. It's so vibrant and bright, and I'm going to be the saddest human being if they don't bounce back. All right, now moving along to the animals in the tank. So I haven't added any new fish to the tank yet, like I said I would in my last video. I know, I lied, I'm a horrible person. This is not new information. We're gonna keep moving on. <laughs> I hope fish do come soon though, because lately I have had an absolute explosion of amphipods. Like they just appeared overnight. I don't know where they came from. 
They're literally everywhere, and I need something to eat most of them. Despite that, I'm actually a little glad that I don't have any fish yet, because my sea cucumber is already giving me daily migraines, so I don't think I would be able to handle a new fish in the tank, as well as watch over this mischievous little thing. And yes, you did hear me right. My sea cucumber, the animal that looks like its sole purpose in life is just to lay there and do nothing, is causing me stress. <laughs> this thing is climbing everything in sight. It even pooped on my zoanthids, so that was lovely. First of all, I'm convinced this guy just doesn't want to be a sea cucumber because he has yet to burrow into the sand at all. He does like to eat it, but he mainly just stays on the surface, as well as climbing most of the rock work in the tank. Once I found him on top of the rock structure on the left, and you know, as a human being who enjoys bouldering for fun, I somehow managed to relate to this little lump of an organism. So I left him alone to kind of do his own thing. However, this eventually led me to losing my absolute mind because he found a way to scale the walls. I was very confused at first because I didn't think their undersides were supposed to be sticky to the point where they're able to climb smooth vertical surfaces. But I guess I was very wrong about that. Is he trying to escape? I don't know. I just know that he likes doing it. And this has gotten him into a lot of trouble because at one point he just shimmied his way up the corner between the back of the tank and the overflow box. He got into the overflow box, down the pipe, and into the only sump compartment where my hand didn't fit in it. And I have pretty small hands. So we had to get him out with a piece of flexible tubing that we shoved into the gap between the filter socks and this tiny compartment. I have inherited a rebellious teen in the shape of a log and I'm slowly learning to cope with that. Alrighty, so uh, what's up next, you may be asking. Well, considering the overabundance of amphipods, I'm thinking I might want to get a fish that eats those to kind of decrease their numbers. So maybe a wrasse? Hopefully this one doesn't get sick and die like the last one did. Again, knock on some wood for me, please. <laughs> when it comes to the corals that I want to add next, I'm thinking I'm going to want to, you know, kind of wait around and see if my Favites and Electric Oompa Loompa zoanthids get any better. I feel weird about adding in a bunch of corals all at once when some are already not doing too great. So we're just going to see how that goes first. However, if these corals do start making a comeback, I think it would be pretty nice to start putting some mushrooms right about here. We have some recordia here that I think are super pretty and I would love to have them in my tank. I also eventually want to put some corals up here in this area to really fill it out, but I can't decide what to put up here that isn't some form of encrusting coral. And I don't know what else would look good in this area, so please leave me your suggestions in the comments down below of what you think would not only do well in this area, but also will create a fuller appearance. And before you say anything, no acros. None. I do not have the skill set for acros. This is not going to happen. Uh, LPS only. Let's just say that. Otherwise, that's all I have for this update. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be seeing all of you next year for the next update. So take care and as always, happy reefing. <laughs>